On the next Transformed. That God is in control. You know, that he had a plan for my life. Even though me growing up in Chicago, I really didn't see myself even leaving Chicago. But it got to a point where things started to line up. And as I started to join the military and going on my own, it really put in perspective that God was setting my pace, you know, leading my path, you know, and I just had to follow him and trust in him. God leads Jason away from gangs and a rowdy military life. Hear his story on the next Transform. Welcome to Transformed, a program where we share testimonies of God's amazing love and transforming power. In today's program, a real-life story of buried treasure changes the life of a California couple. Yet there are nuggets of spiritual gold right in front of us. Pastor Chris Holland will explain how to cash in on the prize. Have you ever felt God's presence in your life designing your spiritual journey to grow closer to Him, step by step? In today's Transform story, Jason learns that God is truly with him, providing people in his life that bring a new revelation of love and mercy. It all started with his mom at home. Oh, my mom, like I said, she was a Christian and she definitely uh, honed in the actual experience of what Christianity was really like. And actually it goes back further to my mother, my grandmother, who was a soldier for the Lord. She really brought the principles, you know, into her life. And of course, being a loving mother, she wanted to share it with me. And she, of course, she would take me to, to Sunday school and allow me to be able to hang out with other kids and develop that relationship, you know, a social aspect, as well as my Christian foundation that she was putting into me every day, you know, as yes. we were living. Some people think that, well, you've got a Christian upbringing, you'll never face any challenges in your life. But uh, that's not the case, right? Oh, no, not at all. You know, especially for me, I was in Chicago. You know, a lot of gang activity was in there. My mom tried her best, you know, to keep me off the corners and what have you. And it did justice, though. As I started to look back at my life, even now, uh, I, I just thank God for my mom because she really wanted me to be a man of God, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I love her for that. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she's prayed for you all along. Oh, it still is. <laughs> so how did she feel when you signed up for the U.S. Navy? You were 22 Ooh. years old. Yeah, uh, she was scared, you know, and she even tells me today, like, Jason, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't want you to join the military, you know, but I left it in God's hand. And from that point on, you know, I told her that I got baptized, you know, before I went into the service, because at that particular moment in time before I joined, I wasn't baptized. My mom was praying for me to be baptized, and it came to a point that I got baptized uh, going to an actual barber shop. My uh, barber actually invited me to a Bible uh, study that actually allowed me to get baptized. And so when I told her, that kind of allowed some of the, uh, it, it involved a lot of relief, you know. It's beautiful how God uses different people to transform a life. Oh, yeah. Now, some people could panic. Your father had been in the military also, right? In exactly. the Army. Yes, exactly. So uh, you're in the U.S. Navy. Some people could say only bad could happen there. And yet, God had a special plan while you were serving the U.S. Navy. Oh, yeah. It started even at boot camp. You know, they asked me to be the religious petty officer, you know, during boot camp. And so what I did was actually I give prayers, you know, before we did any type of activities. And from that point on, you know, as I got into the fleet, as they call it, on the ship, the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, uh, the Lord started to show me as far as he allowed me to do a Bible study there. And uh, yeah, it was a great time that I actually spent with uh, brothers of the faith. And we actually learned about each other and also about God. So we might have these uh, preconceptions that everyone in the Navy is hard drinking, <laughs> hard living, and there probably are some like that. Mm -hmm. But you're saying there are brothers and sisters oh, yeah. really seeking the Lord, and you actually led a Bible study there on the ship. Yeah, amazing, you know, and like I say, it really got to a point where I started to really see God move in my life, you know, and I just want to take it back a little bit more. When I was in boot camp, it's a testimony right here, I could not swim. And somebody would be like, why would you even join the military, <laughs> especially the Navy, if you <laughs> couldn't right. swim? And so it got to a point where the Lord allowed me, it's a miracle, I swim, you know, a Olympic, uh, Olympic size swimming pool, you know, from this end to that end. And I just praise God for it. And that's when God started to really show me that he was in control of my life. That's beautiful. So you're holding a Bible study, but God has a plan to lead you 
into more ch Bible truth. Oh, yeah. And how did that happen? You, it was almost like two Bible studies overlapping. Exactly, yeah. And there was a guy by the name of Robert Best, you know, he was doing a Daniel Revelation study on board the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower. And so I was doing a Bible study as well. So when I was leaving out, the Bible study I was doing, he was coming in, setting up. And so I saw him doing this, you know, Revelation, you know, Daniel Revelation study. And I was like, man, I was really curious about these books, but I was a young babe in Christ and I didn't really feel comfortable going in by myself. And so I stayed a little bit for his study. And then lo and behold, I started studying more and not just taking his word for it, but actually studying the Bible, having that Berean state of mind, you know, and studying the Bible. And it got to a point that I started to see more truth and it was just amazing. Well, I can see you're quoting things like the Bereans. Yes. Paul said that they were more noble Amen. than those in Thessalonica. The Bereans searched the scriptures daily mm -hmm. to see if the things were so. Yep. So you didn't take Robert Best's uh, word for it. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, you talk about Daniel and Revelation. Those were those are great prophetic books, mm -hmm. right? Talking about history all the way to the end of the world. But you were a little hesitant yeah. to study them by yourself. Yeah, because there's some meaty books. And of course, me being young, I didn't want to take anything out of context or make anything that wasn't there something that was there, you know. So I really wanted to, and I prayed about it. I asked God, please, you know, these books are very important. And as the Lord started to lead, that's when I started to attend the Bible study. And boy, it was amazing. Now, this wasn't just a one time, half hour study oh, no. of Daniel and Revelation. <laughs> how, how long did the series last? About three and a half weeks. And of course, it was not just myself, but it was the other fellow, uh, uh, you know, service members, you know, Navy people that was with there. And actually four, maybe about five people got baptized after this Daniel and Revelation study. What was the most important lesson you learned? You'd, you'd grown up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. You certainly had a praying mother, maybe a praying father too, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Both Christians, right? Yeah. But uh, you're going deeper into the Word of God. Uh, what was the most important lesson you learned through that journey? That God is in control, you know, that He had a plan for my life. Even though me growing up in Chicago, I really didn't see myself even leaving Chicago. But it got to a point where things started to line up. And as I started to join the military and going on my own, it really put in perspective that God was setting my pace, you know, leading my path, you know, and I just had to follow Him and trust in Him. And after eight years in the U.S. Navy. In 16 days. And six, eight years and 16 days. Yeah. Nobody's counting, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you got out. And one of the first things you did mm -hmm. was you went to the church where this fellow serviceman, Robert Best, was an elder. Mm -hmm. And you confessed your faith in Jesus in baptism. Oh, yeah. Amen. And, it, and it, actually, this is the third time I was baptized, actually. Mm -hmm. And this third time really brought a revelation because I had studied and I really understood the essence of what baptism really was. You know, that I was, you know, crucifying myself in Christ, you know, and it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And so it just became a beautiful thing. But what's exciting in the rest of your transformed story is that baptism was not the end of your journey. Amen but just the beginning of a whole new life and ministry sounds like transformation is the work of a lifetime. Oh yeah, definitely. And it's a beautiful thing when you actually have someone with you doing it. You know, we're not just by ourselves. Jesus is with us, you know, by our side, helping us transform to be more like him. There's more to come in Jason's testimony. As he grows in his spiritual journey, Satan does his best to derail God's plans. Part two of Jason's story is still ahead. Do you have a testimony to share? Our team would love to hear about it. Go to hopetv.org slash transformed to share your story with us. We are waiting to hear from you. The letters you send us each day encourage our hearts. We celebrate when you find rich treasure in God's Word. We hurt when your prayers cry out for healing and peace. The body of Christ, the church, works together, sympathizes together, and rejoices together. Here are a few letters from our viewers. Siba Balwe writes from South Africa. We have viewers in more than 200 countries around the world. Says, my husband and I enjoy Hope Sabbath School. It's become a family tradition to watch Hope Channel every Sabbath morning. We love to sing the scripture songs too. Thank you for being a blessing to our family and to everyone watching Hope Channel around the world.
I'm excited about our new digital Bible study platform where tens of thousands are signing up at hope.study. Sivana Rayan writes and says, course completed. I have gained knowledge and insights through the guidance of this course. The course is very easy and simple to understand. Praise and thanks to God and to the course provider. I pray that God will bless the ministry of this course, reaching and connecting people worldwide to God. Well, thanks so much for writing to us. Misonda writes and says, this course was useful. Went to hope.study, signed up for a Bible study course. I identified with most of the symptoms. The presentation was simple and I am satisfied with the process. We have a new program called Hope Talks with Pastor Lonnie Meloshenko. Laura writes and says, so many thoughts went through my mind as I heard your talk. It reminds me to let go of fear and to read God's Word daily so my faith can be strong. What's your story of transformation? Tell us about it at hopetv.org slash transformed. Look for the link to share your story. And while you're there, please, would you make a financial contribution to support Hope Channel? We rely on your generous gifts to fulfill our mission. Won't you become a sustaining partner with us? Visit hopetv.org slash transformed to make a donation. And now to a story of modern day hidden treasure. Here's Pastor Chris Holland. A Northern California couple by the name of John and Mary were on their daily walk with their dog. Now they had taken that walk many times for years. As they walked along their property, they noticed something sticking out of the ground. It looked like a rusty can, but they weren't sure. They had never noticed it before, but today they saw it and it intrigued them. And so they began to dig around the object and eventually they unearthed eight rusty cans. Now, while that may not seem like much of a find, it was the contents of those metal cans that was truly amazing. What they found might well be the greatest buried treasure ever found in the United States. They found a cache of 1,400 rare 19th century coins, and it is estimated to be worth more than 10 million U.S. dollars. No one knows exactly how they got there. Some had thought it was money from a bank robbery. However, that theory has been proven false. It seems that someone just buried these coins and died before they let anyone know where they were. This couple's life was transformed by finding this hidden treasure. You know, Jesus talks about hidden treasures. In Matthew 13, 44, he says these words, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. My dear friends, we have a wonderful treasure in this book. It is a treasure that won't just change our lives here on this earth, but it will transform our lives for eternity. Jesus himself said in John 5, 39, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. You see, friends, transformation occurs in coming to Jesus through his word and allowing him to transform us fully. Do you want to experience that transforming power today? The instructions are simple. Look to the Bible, and in the Bible, see the one, Jesus Christ, who has the power to transform your life and transform mine. Do you want to experience that transformation today? It's guaranteed. Just pick up the Bible, read in the Bible, and find, find transforming grace in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you have given us the Bible, and that by reading the Bible, we are led to your son Jesus, who transforms us through his grace and power. May each of us today experience that transformation. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. of 
gotta find peace and love. Been searching for love. I've looked, looked everywhere and every place. Follow trains, there is no way. I'll find it by myself. But your grace gave me a reason to live. And your name, your name is enough to forget. Away, out of my life go my sin. Lost like the dust in the wind And suddenly I'm free Lost Out on my own And scarred from battles I've never won The sun Is hidden by clouds and drops of rain Filled with pain but surely someday Your glory will rise again Your grace Gave me a reason to live Your name, your name is enough to forget. Away, out of my life go my sins. Lost like the dust in the wind, and suddenly I'm free. Jason Lawson has been sharing his story of how God has led in his life a process of transformation. Now to part two of my conversation with Jason. Remember when I first met you, I saw all these beautiful tattoos mm -hmm. and I thought, that brother's been in the Navy. <laughs> and it was eight years and 16 days you yeah. were in the Navy. Amen. But God had done something amazing. He he'd touched your heart, led you into deep Bible truth. Mm -hmm. You were baptized right after you got out. Yeah. But that was not the end of your journey. How has God grown you as, as a follower of Jesus uh, since that day? Well, I actually uh, attend a small church in my neighborhood, and I've been going there. It's a startup church, you know, and I've been going there for about Two, two, about two years, and so there I've been invited to do junior Sabbath school as far as leading out young teens and dealing with Bible truths. And also, uh, just, a couple, just a week ago, I actually uh, got my first time to, to preach, if you will, you know, at the church. So that was a beautiful thing. And just looking back and allowing the Lord to really use me as I humbly submit to Him on a daily basis is totally a beautiful thing. Now, one of the advantages of a church plant or a startup church is basically everyone's needed, right? Yeah, exactly. yeah I see that. Yeah. So how long after you started attending did they ask you to help? I think it was like the, the next week. <laughs> they, they got me in right then and there. And I told them, I said, yes in faith, but I'm going to pray on it, though, because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just their need or, you know, me wanting to do it, but God had this already ordained for me to do. Now, after deep study of the Word of God, you led a Bible study on the ship. Mm -hmm. You attended a Daniel Revelation seminar. But you still now have started watching Hope Sabbath School every week. Mm -hmm. In fact, 
someone may recognize you and say, that's <laughs> Jason. He's sometimes on the team, right. actually part of the Hope Sabbath School team. But what is it that you drives you to keep studying the Bible? Uh, is there actually more information you want to gain, or is it just keeping you really close to the Lord? What, what drives you to keep studying the Bible? Right, just the love of Christ, you know. As I start to read it from Genesis to Revelation, you know, and I haven't read the whole Bible, but just in that gap, you know, of the Word of God, it really puts in perspective how much, you know, Jesus want to have a relationship with us, you know. And so that drives me to know someone wants to, you know, hear you, someone wants to spend time with you. It's just automatic that I want to be able to be reciprocal to this action actual calling on my life, you know. Now, someone may be listening to your transformed story and saying, that's a miracle. You know, this guy could have been in a gang or dead. Yeah, exactly. And here you are, you're preaching, teaching right. uh, children to know mm -hmm. and love God. But the Christian journey is not always easy. Yeah. What are some of the greatest challenges you faced since you decided to fully commit your life to Jesus? Well, the first thing, you know, I'm married, you know, and of course, my lovely wife, you know, definitely we're in a point in our marriage where it's challenging. You know, all marriages have challenges. And so, you know, I'm trying to go this way and she's going that way. So it really puts in, you know, allow me to submit, you know, to Christ so he can give me the strength to be able to work these things out and not doing my own strength, you know, have the loving words to say, you know, I know uh, Paul put it this way, you know, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Right. And so this is what I'm searching every day in my life so I can be that loving husband so she mm. can see the Christ in me. Mm. You know, there's a beautiful promise Jesus gave that, that when the Spirit fills us, out of our hearts will flow mm -hmm. rivers of living water, water amen. right? Amen. And he, God pours His love into our hearts. So how has that impacted you? I mean, is that a daily commitment that you need to make? Oh, yeah, daily commitment. You know, uh, as Paul said, too, I die daily. And saying that I submit, you know, I give my life to Jesus so that He can use me because I understand we, we're in a spiritual warfare, you know. The things that we wrestle with are not, you know, flesh, but they're, you know, they're actually spiritual. And so I need that spiritual insight to be able to fight this war in love. So here we are. We're on a journey. Transformation, then, was not just one thing that happened after eight years and 16 Indeed. days in the Navy, right. but it's a daily journey, a daily, daily commitment. What encouragement would you give to someone who says, Jason, I want to experience transformation in my life, but sometimes it seems so hard. Yeah, uh, Jesus loves you. I mean, it's as simple as that, Jesus loves you. That's the most important lesson of all. Mm -hmm. Amen. It can be difficult to understand or comprehend, but Jesus does love you. He cared enough about you, your hopes and dreams. He knows your mistakes and sins, but He gave His life for you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Your journey to Christ may have lots of potholes along the way. There may be others who try to dissuade you from seeking truth. But my friend, hold fast to God's unchanging hand. I'd like to pray for you right now. Our Father in heaven, thank you for your leading in our lives. Thank you for your desire to transform us and to save us to be with you for eternity. Bless us and lead us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. As you continue to grow in God's love, share your testimony with us. Visit hopetv.org slash transformed. That's hopetv.org slash transformed. And if you're led to support Hope Channel's ministry to change lives, I invite you to make a donation to be part of this great miracle. You can find the link at hopetv.org slash transformed. Thank you for joining me for Transform today. And remember, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. May God continue to transform your life.